Good morning. Today is February 28th. And we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. Last day of February. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 20. In the days of Jesus, the Pharisees considered themselves a step above others in their observance of religious practices and ritual. They trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. They determined their own goodness and measured their own faithfulness by the degree to which they paid their tithes and offerings, observed the Sabbath, and kept themselves aloof from ritually unclean persons and circumstances. Jesus taught there is none good but one, that is God. God, not man, sets standards of right and wrong. People who, who are ignorant of God's righteousness go about seeking to establish their own righteousness. Unless we can keep the law of God more thoroughly than do those who claim to live it perfectly, we would do well to trust in the mercy and grace of the one perfect, truly perfect being. Okay, so today is, my hair is a mess. Okay, today is Mark 2. We're finally back in Mark. Um, after a while, it's Mark 2. Okay, it is what it is. And uh, Jesus forgives sin, heals a paralytic, eats with tax collectors and sinners, and announces that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Um, so this is the story of the man on the bed being born by four, being brought to Jesus. And oh my gosh, my hair is driving me crazy. I'm sorry, it looks horrendous. Um, and, uh, so he heals the man born of four and then the scribes and the Pharisees are like, why are you eating with sinners? And he goes, the whole need, not the physician, the sick do. And then, um, his men aren't fasting on the Sabbath and they say, why aren't your men fasting? John's disciples do. And Jesus says, can the bridesmaids fast while the bride is with them? And then they go about on the Sabbath picking corn and eating it. And they say, why are your men doing unlawful things on the Sabbath? And he says, did you not read what King David did when they were in need? And so they're just going about this, the Pharisees thinking they're better than everybody else. That's exactly what this, this chapter is about. Um, and it just kind of, that's exactly how it happens. Just like yesterday where it kind of goes from one story to the next and doesn't give much detail. That's what happens here. And that's the gist of this chapter. Um, so let's, oh, Jeffrey had nothing to say about this one. We don't get into Jeffrey. I'm very sorry. Very sorry. Um, we don't get into Jeffrey for Mark until Mark 4. Uh, which I believe is this week. Yes. Tomorrow is Mark three and then Thursday and Friday is Mark four. So, um, Ludlow, what did Ludlow have to say about this? Um, the savior's acknowledgement that he was, he has power to forgive sin is also an acknowledgement that he is the son of God. Both Jesus and the doctrine of the law who were then present knew Oh, doctors of the law, who were then present, knew that none but God can forgive sins. Accordingly, as a pointed and dramatic witness that the power of God was resident in him, Jesus took, perhaps sought, this appropriate occasion to forgive sins. Being then called in question by the scripturalists who knew, and that rightly, that the false assumption of power to forgive sins was blasphemy. Jesus did what no imposter could have done. He proved his divine power by healing the for, by healing the forgiven man. To his query, does it require more power to forgive sins than to make the sick rise up and walk? There could be only one answer. They are as one. 
he that can do the one can do the other. I don't. I'm, again, having trouble reading this morning. All right, let's see. For verse 22, we've got something here for verse 22, which is, No man putteth new wine in old bottles. The gospel taught by Christ was a new revelation, uh, superseding the past and making the fulfillment of the law. It was no mere addendum, nor was it a reenactment of past requirements. It embodied a new and an everlasting covenant. Attempts to patch the Judaistic robe of traditionalism with the new fabric of the covenant could result in nothing more slightly than a rending of the fabric. The new wine of the gospel could not be held in the old time-worn containers of mosaic libations. Judaism would be belittled and Christianity perverted by any such incongruous association I-N-C-O-N-G-R-U-O-U-S Association. All right. Verse 27. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. This verse could have been translated, The Sabbath came into existence for the sake of man and not man for the sake of the Sabbath. The Joseph Smith translation adds significant material. Wherefore, the Sabbath was given unto man for a day of rest, and also that man should glorify God, and not that man should not eat. For the Son of Man made the Sabbath day, therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Elder Bruce R. McConkie explains, Sabbath observance is not wholly a negative thing. It does not consist entirely of simply resting from one's labors. The Sabbath is a day of worship, a day for man to glorify God, to pay his devotions to the Most High. By announcing himself to the Jews as the Lord of the Sabbath, Jesus was in effect saying, I am the God of Israel, the great Jehovah, your Messiah, the one who made the Sabbath day, giving it to Moses on Sinai. Therefore, I am Lord also of the Sabbath and can specify in my own name, what constitutes proper Sabbath observance? I have no thoughts on that. Okay, besides my wacky hair. Okay, so. Today is the 28th. It is the last day of February. And I will leave you now with a prayer from a diary of prayer. We have two, I think. Nope, just one. Uh, it's prayers for two workers. And it's titled The Bee. It is from Carmen Bernos de Gestold. Lord, I am not one to despise your gifts. May you be blessed, who spread the riches of your sweetness for my zeal. Let my small span of ardent life melt into our great communal task to lift up to your glory this temple of sweetness, a citadel of incense, a holy candle, myriad celled, myriad celled, molded of your graces and of my hidden work. Dear God, give me time. Men are always so driven. Make them understand that I can never hurry. Give me time to eat. Give me time to plod. Give me time to sleep. Give me time to think. All right, that was Mark chapter two, and tomorrow we do Mark three. We will see you then. Bye. Bye.